in the annals of wrestling history, AWA. Super Sunday 83 stands as a visionary spectacle that transformed the sport forever. It was my fervent ambition to orchestrate a Super Bowl of wrestling, a grand event that would bring together the most iconic figures of the squared circle, and by the powers vested in me, I triumphantly achieved that goal. From the captivating presence of Mad Dog Vachon to the legendary Hulk Hogan, the charismatic Wendy Richter, the enigmatic Judy Martin, and the alluring Velvet McIntyre, the stage was set for an unforgettable extravaganza. Alongside these luminaries, the indomitable Brutus Beefcake, the sharp-tongued Jesse Ventura, the powerful Ken Pa Terrao, the agile Rick Martell, and the technical wizard Jim Brunzel graced the ring with their unmatched skills. Before they ascended to stardom, they all converged at this pivotal moment, etched in time for eternity. A.W.A. Super Sunday 83 was the proving ground, the crucible where legends were forged and dreams were realized. It was here that the world first witnessed their brilliance, their charisma, and their indomitable spirit. As the spotlights illuminated the arena, these gladiators of the grappling world showcased their exceptional talents, captivating the imaginations of millions. With every move, every hold, and every maneuver, they redefined the boundaries of athleticism and entertainment. The crowd erupted in thunderous applause, their voices reverberating through the rafters, echoing their awe and admiration for these extraordinary performers. A.W.A. Super Sunday 83 not only captivated a generation of wrestling fans, but also laid the foundation for the global phenomenon that wrestling would become. It was a watershed moment, a turning point that ushered in a new era of excitement and spectacle. And as the final bell tolled, the legacy of this historic event was forever cemented in the annals of sports entertainment. So let us raise our voices in tribute to the pioneers of AWA, Super Sunday 83, the trailblazers who dared to dream big and change the face of wrestling forever. Their names will forever be etched in the pantheon of greats, inspiring generations to come and reminding us of the enduring power of determination, athleticism, and the relentless pursuit of excellence. Not only did AWA stars grace the stages of Vince McMahon's promotion, but they did so at the pinnacle of their prowess. It was a fertile era, a golden age where the indomitable Fern Gagne stood tall, embodying the very essence of wrestling, eclipsing even the influence of Vince McMahon Jr. himself. Tonight, under the bright lights of the AWA, we have a clash of titans, Brad Ryangans, and Rocky Stone, as we embark on this journey through the AWA. Brace yourself for an unwavering obsession with the hometowns of our esteemed wrestlers. Introducing my esteemed ring announcer and commentator, Ron Trongard, a true embodiment of unmatched charisma reminiscent of Don I. Miss. This remarkable individual, a local talent fortuitously found, exudes an unparalleled sense of authenticity that seems to strike a chord with audiences. However, in my personal observation, I cannot help but draw comparisons to the eccentric Christopher Lloyd character from the iconic film Back to the Future. His mind appears to wander in the far reaches of space as he engages in animated monologues, leaving me wondering if he has encountered an abnormal number of lightning-induced electric shocks. It's difficult to overlook his unconventional style with sunglasses donned indoors and hair that seemingly defies gravity, creating an appearance akin to someone who has recently experienced the effects of hallucinogenic substances. From the wide open plains of Appleton, Minnesota, emerged a figure who embodied the true spirit of A.W.A., Brad Ryangans, with a name that resonated like a quirky town diner, Ryangan stood tall amidst the wrestling giants. Why, one might ask, did he cling to such a peculiar moniker? Perhaps it was a testament to his unwavering connection to his humble roots. Ryangan's exuded an aura of a physical education instructor who, after the final school bell rang, transformed into a fierce warrior in the squared circle. 
his rugged appearance and unwavering determination painted a picture of a genuine blue-collar hero, someone who had toiled hard and earned his place among the elite. Together, Ringens and his adversaries resembled a tapestry of working-class warriors, men who found their destiny in the unforgiving world of professional wrestling. They were the embodiment of grit, perseverance, and unyielding spirit, values deeply ingrained in the fabric of AWA. Brad, a legitimate former U.S. Olympian in Greco-Roman wrestling from 1976 to 1980, instantly captivated me, a fellow former Olympian. It is clear that he will play a significant role in our AWA views by opening many of our cards. He hails from my renowned wrestling camp, which produced exceptional athletes who possessed genuine shooting skills. Riengans, later renowned as a trainer of stars in his own right, particularly with talents like Brock Lesnar and many others. It seems I have a knack for recognizing and nurturing shooters. With the individuals I'm associated with, I can confidently expect strong support in any grandstand challenge. In his tell-all autobiography, Bobby Heenan painted a vivid and unflattering picture of his wrestling experiences with Brad. According to Heenan, Brad was as rigid and unyielding as a taxi cab, refusing to budge or adapt to the flow of the match, he likened the experience to wrestling a refrigerator, emphasizing that he wasn't referring to the iconic football player from WrestleMania II. In a lively cadence, Trongard introduces us to a world of complex scientific phenomena that could lead to a tumultuous ride. He speaks of molecular fortitude, atomic weight drops, combustion busters, and ionic ground and pounds, painting a picture of a vibrant scientific tapestry it's almost as if he's a playful cat batting a ball of knowledge over his head, reveling in the fascination of science. While his enthusiasm is infectious, it poses a dilemma for me as I'm presenting an elaborate show to a captivated audience. Within just two minutes, he drops a barrage of scientific jargon, leaving many viewers scrambling to decipher the terminology. It's like a sudden detour on our journey, pulling us away from the immersive experience we're crafting. In the squared circle, we embark on a journey with Ron, a captivating and polarizing character. The story begins with Brad Ryangans, a massive wrestler whose mere appearance elicits gasps and awe from the spectators. With a leapfrog, he launches himself over his opponent, gaining momentum for a powerful body slam. As Rocky Stone struggles to regain his footing, Ryangan swiftly executes an arm drag, seamlessly transitioning into an arm bar. This is the essence of professional wrestling in 1983. Arm bars, drags, and an unwavering commitment to realism. The primary focus is to remind the audience that what they're witnessing is not a stage performance, but a genuine contest of strength and skill. Every arm bar, hip toss, and pose is a testament to the authenticity of the sport. It's crucial to convey to the audience that these moves are legitimate, instilling a sense of excitement and intrigue. The objective is to create an atmosphere where the boundaries between reality and performance blur, leaving the spectators mesmerized by the spectacle unfolding before them. It's quite comical to catch a glimpse of our ringside photographers equipped with these hilariously flimsy plastic cameras readily available at Kmart while events like Starcade or WrestleMania boast the presence of true professionals armed with top-of-the-line gear. With calculated precision, Stone swiftly employed the sharp end of his elbow as a tactical weapon expertly disengaging from the constricting armbar. Like a graceful acrobat, Brad executed a captivating leapfrog maneuver transitioning into an arm drag with an inexplicable burst of energy. Brad takes a daring leap to play leapfrog, but his plans go awry as he receives a powerful shoulder block to the stomach. Trongard contemplates the possibility that Rocky Stone's elbow pad hides more than just cushioning. However, before Trongard can delve deeper into his thoughts, a cleverly insulting heel quickly interjects, asserting that it is indeed just padding. Feeling uh, utterly perplexed and frustrated, Brad wonders if this guy's actions, along with Trongard's acid remarks, are intentionally causing him agony. I must admit, the rewards we received for having Ron Trongard appear on our show remained a mystery, but it definitely warranted a sentence of five to ten years. 
Stone executes a powerful leg drop, swiftly transitioning into putting immense pressure on Brad's throat with his knee while they lay on the mat. In the bustling ring, Stone, with steely determination, intercepts Rangan's momentum, sending him flying across the canvas. The ropes beckon as Stone hurls his adversary towards them, the crowd's jeers intensifying as ringing his lands precariously on the ring apron. In the realm of the American Wrestling Association, we delve into the intricacies of an unspoken rule. Propelling your opponent over the top rope is a grave misstep. It not only results in an immediate disqualification, but also invites a barrage of ill-conceived booking decisions that can mar the trajectory of a wrestler's career. The ramifications of such an action are dire. Stone, by indulging in this maneuver, has inadvertently set himself up for a tumultuous journey fraught with setbacks and obstacles, testing his resilience and challenging his ability to navigate the treacherous waters of professional wrestling in the squared circle. Brad Reagan found himself trapped in a corner, repeatedly rammed against the unforgiving steel. Yet, like a phoenix rising from the ashes, he ignited his inner fire and retaliated, driving his shoulder into his opponent's midsection and breaking free from the corner's confines. With renewed determination, he engaged in a furious exchange of offense. A whip to the corner proved futile as Brad executed a breathtaking backdrop, sending his opponent tumbling out of the corner. Knees of steel cracked against his opponent's skull, followed by another whip to the corner. In a flash, Brad unleashed a thunderous dropkick, sending shockwaves through the arena. Unleashing the fury of his gut wrench, Brad Reagan dominated the ring, captivating the audience with his signature babyface rally. Each move told a story of resilience, determination, and unyielding spirit. But Ryangans, like a tempest in human form, had a secret weapon up his sleeve. With the crowd on the edge of their seats, Ryangans unleashed a gut-wrenching suplex that sent his opponent reeling. The impact reverberated through the arena, leaving the challenger stunned and gasping for air. One, two, three. The referee's hand shot up, signaling the end of the contest. Ringens had triumphed, his victory a testament to his relentless spirit and unwavering determination. As the crowd erupted in applause, a sense of awe settled upon the arena. They had witnessed a spectacle that transcended time, a clash of titans that could have graced the hallowed halls of 1974. But this was 1983, and Ringens had etched his name into the annals of wrestling history with his awe-inspiring performance. This groovy fight transported me straight back to the 70s. The action, though solid, would have been even better in a more technical matchup. The sudden ending left me feeling a bit disoriented, like I'd stepped out of a time machine. In the realm of professional wrestling, a tapestry of spectacle unfolds before our eyes. And amidst this pandemonium, we encounter the enigmatic figure of Ron Trongard. Prepare yourself for a journey into the surreal as we delve into a replay where Trongard embarks on a mine. Bending Odyssey, uttering the word, souffles not once, not twice, but a staggering three times during the broadcast. Oh, the celestial bodies above, how can we comprehend the ethereal state of this man? It is as if he has, a, he has ascended to a higher plane, graced with the wisdom of the cosmos. Or perhaps he has succumbed to the allure of forbidden substances, wandering through the woods of Aberdeen, Wisconsin, seeking solace in the embrace of nature's psychedelic offering. Envision him, if you will, residing in the Ayahuasca apartment complex, a dwelling steeped in mystery and intrigue. Within its walls, he communes with the spirits, spending countless hours in the sweat lodge, seeking communion with the divine, Colors swirl before his eyes, morphing into celestial visions that only he can perceive. Uh, Ron Trongard, the Jack Kerouac of the pro wrestling world, embarking on a relentless quest for enlightenment forever in pursuit of that elusive moment of transcendence. He roams the earth searching for the elusive peyote plant, believing that its mythical properties hold the key to unlocking the secrets of the universe. 
He is a man living on the fringes of reality, perpetually caught in a cosmic ballet between brilliance and madness. Whether he is basking in the brilliance of his own genius or succumbing to the depths of his own folly, one thing is certain. Ron Trongard is a captivating enigma, leaving an indelible mark on the annals of professional wrestling. During Gene Okerlund's interview with Brad, his relentless chatter revolves around his signature movie, The Soup Side Plex, a winning maneuver he takes immense pride in. It's evident that this move has been his go-to technique throughout the year, solidifying his success in the ring. One can't help but find it amusing that Ron, in all his culinary enthusiasm, views Brad's move as a delectable treat. Perhaps Ron might even come up with a quirky name for it, like the soup and salad. Just the mention of Brad's bread and butter references brings an unexpected spark of energy to Ron, as if he's been deprived of sustenance for days. As Gene Okerlund engages in an interview with Brad, a restless murmur spreads among the crowd, gradually transforming into a chorus of disapproving boos. Individually, each spectator grapples with uncertainty, pondering if they inadvertently committed a misdeed or if they are perhaps being scolded like rebellious children. However, the truth behind the cascading boos becomes evident. The crowd is expressing its vehement disapproval towards the villainous character, Buck Zumoff, who is about to step into the ring to face off against Steve Regal. It is apparent that the disdain stems from Zumoff's controversial past rather than any perceived wrongdoing on the part of the bewildered spectators.